Let's play a game. All right. With your skills, you have to. I put you two pictures. Yeah. And you have to choose which is the professional poker player. Mm. Those are players in Argentina, yeah. and the other picture is from an artist in Argentina. Ah. So <laughs> we're going to, to see our skills. You know, you could do this even for American artists, and I, I wouldn't know lots of them either. Okay, because, okay. like I said, but this is great. You have okay. to, to, to only say right or left. If you, which is the which pro? is the pro? Okay. okay. All right. Um, the left looks like the pro. The the, the left. Yeah. Why? Um, uh, can I see the picture again? Yeah. Ahí va. Okay. No, 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 anterior, no, no, anterior. Previous. Okay. Um, I mean, part of it is because he's at the poker table, but he seems like he's, uh, okay. you know, he's paying attention at the table and maybe he's looking at another player and the chips, whereas uh, the person at the right just looks like he's like daydreaming about maybe okay. his movie or something. I don't know. Okay. But maybe you guys are giving me a trick question. So okay. maybe you no, know no, which no. one I'm going to pick. That's, that's good. <laughs> in the, the left is Damian Salas is uh, the best poker player in Argentina. Ah. Or one of the best. Okay. Yes. <laughs> the other one? Um, the right is the poker player. And why? Um... He looks like he, he's got the Mario on his t-shirt, so someone who's into games and a lot of poker players are video games. Uh, the person at the left, uh, you know, he looks like he's so in shape that if you spent this much time uh, working out, you would not have time to become good at poker. <laughs> You're so, so good in this. So the right guy has got to be the poker player. That's good. That's good. <laughs> well, the, the third one? Um, this is tough. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, give me some time with this okay. one. Huh. My first instinct is saying the right guy, but let me, let me think about this. Uh, artist, huh? Hmm. You know, I, I feel like... I feel like this is one where you're throwing me a curveball. I think this is the one where I'm supposed to get wrong and you guys are trying to trick me. So I'm going to say the guy on the left is the poker player. No, you, your instincts are good. <laughs> is the, the right one. No. Uh, That's a tough one. I, that, that one, I, I would have guessed neither of them look like poker players. Uh, the right one is, uh, on the right one is, no, it's the name. No, Fabian Ortiz, it's okay. the one. He made uh, 16 in the WSOP. Oh, wow. Yeah. 2013 and final table in the PCA okay. of this year. Yeah, yeah. So it's more or less. Yeah. Okay, we have one more. Okay. I could redeem myself. Yeah. Um, hmm. Another tough one. This looks yeah. very similar. Yeah. Oh, okay. If I'm going to go with my instinct, then. Uh, my instinct says the left guy is the poker player. It's correct. Woof! It's correct. If I, see, it's just like poker. When I doubt my instinct, I make mistakes at the poker table. If I go with my instinct, then I'm always right. It's amazing. <laughs> One more. Um, that guy almost looks like a Phil Locke on the right. The Unabomber. It looks <laughs> yeah, just yeah. very close to him. Yeah. Huh. Um, instinct says left is the poker player. No, it left his pocket brain. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> You're so good in this. For a second, I thought, wait, is that Phil Locke? It looks just like Phil Locke. We can't believe you. <laughs> one more. Uh, this is the last one. Uh, the left is the poker player. The left is, uh, yes. Yeah. That's okay, too. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a poker player. <laughs> so you don't uh, give your instinct in one and you felt that, but... Yeah. yeah, so yeah. okay. See, it's in poker. Sometimes you make mistakes, and it's okay. You have to learn from your mistakes. So I <laughs> learned from my mistakes, and I corrected it for the next three. Uh, when did you decide to 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 be a poker play, a professional poker player? When? Yeah. Um. So in college, uh, I was very passionate about business, entrepreneurship. I was hundred percent sure this is what I was going to do. I started playing poker in college just to make some money on the side, and then. Um, you know, next thing you know, I'm going to Vegas and playing and, you know, one day I'm in the Bellagio, I'm playing against Sammy Farha and, uh, you know, everyone, you see him on TV and, yeah. you know, you think, oh, this is an amazing pro 
and I'm playing with him and I feel very comfortable, I'm tricking him and he's falling into my traps and I said, you know, I don't see what's so special about these that I cannot, you know, play with these guys either. So, um, you know, it just kind of showed me that um, when you see things on TV and glorified on YouTube, everything looks very intimidating. But if you just go and do it and put yourself there, then uh, it's not actually that scary. So, um, so after uh, one year f during the summer of college, I went and stayed in Vegas for three weeks. And uh, I, I went to Vegas with uh, eight thousand dollars. And at the end of the summer, I turned it into sixty-five thousand, just really? playing cash games. Or not even end of summer; it was actually three weeks only. And uh, you know, that was kind of the first time I went and felt like I did it full time. So, um, you know, just playing against the professionals and and. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, after I made my one hundred and eighty thousand dollars, I thought I could be professional, and then I lost it all. Yeah. And. The fact that I was able to build it back up and come back with revenge, that's what truly showed me, that taught me that um, I could accomplish anything, you know? That it seemed impossible that how was I ever going to do this again and I did it. So it showed me that uh, even if I'm rock bottom on the floor that I can pick myself up and accomplish something. Um, that kind of just has given me the confidence that if you keep your mind to it and stay focused and work hard that I can do anything. Okay, let's go to 2009. Uh, that was your year in your year in tournaments. Mm -hmm. You won a lot of tournaments or and a lot of money. Yeah. How did how does that res, that results change your life? And with life, I, I mean a personal life and poker life. Um. Well, as far as uh, personal life, um, I mean, I, I before that I had a lot of success in online poker, yeah. but um, you know I hadn't had any big success in live poker, and I always knew that I was good enough. But um, you know, you have your parents and your family doubt you, your friends doubt you, that like you know because they see you just losing, losing, losing all yeah. the time. So it was nice just to get some public approval, just showing people that hey, you know I can do this, and I'm not wasting my time. Um, also, it helped me get a lot of exposure into things that I'm interested in. For example, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm still involved in entrepreneurship. Uh, I do some startups. I invest in some businesses. Yeah. And because uh, I've got the publicity from winning Player of the Year, it, helps, it helped me acquire a large following on Twitter, on Facebook, and just from being on TV. And uh, I, I like to share with the world the things that I learn and the things that I think are good. Um, you know, I'm very into health to meditation, to yoga, and I want the opportunity to positively affect the world and the people around me to make this world a better place. And because I got so much exposure from TV and a lot of followers, now I have an avenue to reach all these people and to speak yeah. to them. And that makes me really happy because it makes me feel like I'm doing something valuable with the reach I have. You know, I see some famous people or even poker players just talking about money and you know things that don't matter like buying so many expensive things and you're teaching people to do that and it's not really a responsible thing that's going to make their life better it's going to lead them to problems so i feel like we need some some good guys on there to reverse that and to show people the other side to be a real normal good grateful person you know in 2013 you uh, win the high, the high roller UK or you good in second? a lot I got second second in second the, okay in, yeah um, the high rollers are profitable to play oh yeah they're definitely profitable you yeah. know um, at first I used to not play anything over 10,000 buy-in yeah. I always thought oh 15,000 25 they must be the best players and that's just not the case um, the way poker goes is if you were to, usually the, the higher the stakes, yeah. the more tougher. But once you get to very high stakes, it actually becomes easier because um, a lot of the very good professionals cannot afford these buy-ins. But um, a lot of the businessmen who, uh, they don't want to play the small buy-ins, they don't want to play the five-day tournaments, they want to go and just play a short two-day or three-day tournament. So. Um, you know, because they're busy, they don't have time to yeah. spend, and they just want a quick play. And, and also, uh, a lot of the businessmen, uh, and maybe the wealthy, they don't want to play a tournament with 5,000 players. They want to play with maybe 100, because they have a better chance of winning. So um, I think because of this, you have um, some special players there that you, don't, that you get access to playing with that uh, maybe aren't the best players. So uh, there's definitely money to be made. 
Um, the, there's a lot of money to be made in tournament, tournament poker. You know, uh, I, I think it's one of those things where people talk and say it's tough, there's no money, but when you go there and do it and see it with your own eyes, then you can see that, okay, he's making mistakes, he's making mistakes, and you see that there's value to be made. Who is your favorite high, pl uh, high roller player? I, I don't have a favorite poker player. No? You know, uh, I, I get asked that question a lot, and um, when I was younger, I felt bad that, oh, I need to think of some answer for this question. No, that, but, <laughs> okay. you know, the, the thing is, um, I don't like putting people on pedestals, and I feel like uh, a lot of times the media teaches yeah. people to put everyone on a pedestal, and when you do that, it makes you feel like you're less than these people. And if you feel like you're less than these people, then you're never going to become successful like that. So uh, what I choose to do is, um, if I see someone really successful, I try to understand why they're successful, what do they do, and how do they think, and uh, I, I respect them. So there's a lot of people that I respect, and uh, they're all human, and they all make their mistakes too. So I try to learn uh, what are the good things they do, and what are the mistakes they do, and take the good things and leave the mistakes. And if you take, uh, if you take the few things from all the different successful people, then you put them into your own life, then you'll also be successful. Uh, for your style of, of poker, obviously, it, it's easier to you to play uh, uh, against pro or against amateurs, because I I think that f uh, for your style, uh, pro could think what you want to think. Mm -hmm. um, it depends. Uh, in, in general, it's definitely easier. It's easier for me to play against amateurs um, as, as it would be with most people. Um, because sometimes a professional will know how to combat my style because they've experienced this and they've studied and they know the mathematics of the game. But if an amateur doesn't know some of these fundamentals, it's hard for them to combat my style. Uh, with that said, I know some poker players that are very smart, very high level. Their, uh, their knowledge of the poker game is better than mine, but they don't do very well at poker. And it's because uh, when they play against amateurs, they get so frustrated that, uh, oh, this player is so bad that uh, I cannot understand how he's thinking. And that's because there's, there's, different, there's two different parts of poker. One is uh, being uh, very good at the skill and the fundamentals of the game. Yeah. But the other part is uh, understanding how other people think and being able to relate to them. So uh, I make friends with all sorts of people. My friends are sometimes the fish at the poker table, the, the pros matter. at the poker oh. table. It doesn't matter because yeah. I'm interested in them as a person. And a lot of poker players, they only surround themselves by the very best pros. So they cannot understand how the fish think or the amateurs. And uh, because of that, they have trouble playing against them because they don't know how they're thinking. So I think it's important that uh, when you see that someone's not very good at poker, don't just think, oh, he's stupid, he's an idiot, no. I'm not interested, you know? Because these are still normal people that have good things to offer in life. And, you know, being good at poker is just being good at one game. It doesn't make you a good or bad person. Mm -hmm. So appreciate everyone. And it also will help your game because you surround yourself by different personalities. Assuming that the money is the same, you prefer to keep ninth in the WSOP uh, main event, so yeah. November 9th, yeah, that yeah. show, but yeah. you're the first to leave, or you uh, win the EPT Barcelona? Assuming um, that the money is the same. If the money is the same. Yeah. Ooh. November 9th, first. Normally, I would say the win, but the WSOP main event is a special event. Yeah. Uh, to me, I feel like getting ninth place in the, in the WSP main event is like winning a tournament. So I, I would rather get ninth in the WSP main event. It's, there's just something so prestigious about getting there. And, you know, once you make it to final nine, the tournament stops. You yeah. come back a few months later that uh, it almost feels like a tournament of champions. It's like all nine players have won a tournament and now they're playing each other. It's a big show. Yeah. So uh, I would prefer ninth in the main event. Do you, now do you pray... For, for money or for glory? Um, I, I definitely play, f uh, well, it depends if you're talking like live or online. Um, live. I mean, what, like when I'm playing online, I'm playing for the money and yeah. to get better as a player. Yeah. Um, when I'm playing uh, live, live. Um, 
It's a little bit of both, to be honest, because um, you know I'm very interested in uh, in business and building my brand. And like I said earlier, um, the more success I have, then the more followers I have, and the more business opportunities I have. And at the end of the day, I want to do something good for the world and feel like I'm adding something to the world. Whereas if I if I just make money, make money, make money, then I'm not really making a difference to anybody in the world. So. Uh, I wouldn't use the word glory, but I would say that uh, I'm playing as a means to an end to accomplish something greater that has nothing to do with money, and it's about affecting people in a good way. Okay, let's try to understand Shaga. So we are going to see two hands, yeah. and you can explain us. Okay. This is the Mercy first that. one. Okay. Why did you choose this hand at this moment of the tournament and that player? Ah, yes. Um, how do you say his name? I can't pronounce his last name. Heinecker? Heinecker, yeah, that's right. I knew he was a very good high stakes. Uh, yeah, it's a mega pro. Yeah, I, I, I knew he was very good. We've never played together. So uh, I just started playing very aggressively at that table. And um, I felt like it appeared to the other players that oh, Faraz Jaka is going to try to run over the table. And um, me and him have never played against each other. And uh, I don't know if he knows that I know who he is and what he's capable of doing. So uh, I predicted that I think very soon he's going to, you know, try to uh, put a stop to me. You know? Okay. You make you, you make the, the... okay. Let, let's let, let's think this. Heinecker, three bet you because, because the position in first time and yeah. because of you. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a seven and you make a four bet. Why? Yeah. Well, I have a because I have an ace as a blocker, so that means it's much less likely that yeah. he has ace king, ace queen, pocket aces. Um, so uh, I basically just felt that uh, I'm predicting that hey, this player is soon gonna do something to me, and he's three betting me and I have an ace, so it's much less likely that he also has. Of course, once in a while, uh, I'm going to get unlucky and he's going to actually have a hand. But, uh, you know, in my head, I predicted that I think very soon he's going to do something. Okay, yeah. So, it, I mean, it's sometimes you uh, make these predictions and you're right, and sometimes you're right, but they also wake up with a hand, you know? He's going to three bet you in most of cases. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then he goes. So, which range you put in, in this moment of the hand. Yeah, after okay. he flats. Let me, I need to see the stacks. Let's okay. see. Five, seven, one, you, and... He's on the button, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, I mean, at this possible. point, yeah. at this point, I figure, you know, obviously he could have, um, you know, something like aces or kings, or he could have uh, some Broadway cards that are suited. So maybe like king, queen suited, um, you know, ace ten suited, ace jack suited, jack king suited, like stuff like this. Um, so, uh, so of course, w w when he flatted me, I wasn't very happy about it, and I'm planning on not doing too much because I know that he probably has a very strong hand. But when I see this flop, this is the this is the savior flop for me because I have a pair and yeah. I have the the nut flush draw. So. Yeah. Almost against any hand, I'm almost 50-50 coin yeah, flip. So coin flip, yeah. I am very relieved once I see this flop, and now I'm happy to get it in. Okay, let's see what it happens. Robinson. I, in in preflop, uh, if Heinecker goes all in, you could call. I, I, I have to fold. No. Yeah. If he goes all in, I have to fold preflop. So um, because calling. Uh, his hand is very hard. You but know that he is in aces. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I cannot call with a7. I'm, I'm four betting as a bluff. So I'm basically, I'm hoping that I four bet and he folds and the hand is finished, you know? And you keep it with the monster in flop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Above average flop. I'd say so. It was a, a big pot in, in, in that moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, this was a very big pot. Yeah. <laughs> you played the hand as he played, if you had aces? Yeah, I think the way he played it is fine. Yeah? I think perfect, yeah. Because um, when I have a7, the chances that I'm going to get a flop that can beat him, it's very, very, very low. 
So I just got lucky and that, that goes to show that you can do everything perfect and you could still lose. And that's what makes this such a tough game because, you know, in, in most sports, if you work hard and you do the right thing, you win. Whereas in poker, you can work hard, do everything perfect and you still lose. So how do you win? You be patient. You know, you can't just win every tournament. You have to play all year long. You have to stay focused and just keep at it. You know, even if you're losing, you have to not let it uh, frustrate you and keep doing it. So that's what the skill in is poker. It's being able to survive the whole year and not letting yourself get frustrated. The variance, we know. Yeah, exactly, the variance. So that's what makes this very unique to other, other games. And I think people don't give enough credit to how important it is to to maintain this up and down swing and that's where eating healthy, exercising and maybe doing meditation and you know anything that helps your mind stay focused and happy is going to help your poker game. But in, in that hand, uh, when he mean raise you at, at the flop and you go all in, it's not better to call flop and then go all in in, in the turn? In this case, uh, was the same because you in, in turn, you get the seven, and yeah. he could well, not. The, the, but... the, the thing is, uh, right now on the flop, I know that I'm pretty much 50 50 almost against almost any hand. You know? Yeah, but he, mean racing, induced the, the, the all in of any spade, no? Um, maybe I, I, I would not necessarily do it with any spade. No? Uh, because, I, because maybe he could have king jack of spades. So if he has king jack of spades, I know that I, I have outs. Whereas if I have a smaller spade, then maybe he has the nut flush and I'm drawn dead. So uh, when, when I'm gonna make a big bluff for all my chips, uh, ideally I wanna have some outs. Uh, yeah, and sure. if I have a smaller flush, I maybe have no outs because he maybe has the nut flush. So, um, so it, it's a calculated risk that I'm taking that even worst case scenario, I'm never in horrible shape. You know, I always have at least, you know, for sure, yeah. some outs, yeah. yeah.